In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us begin. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of life. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. First reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to all ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they re returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. 
O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You send a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary in the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Ascension text for today comes from Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew them, drew, withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I'm Rachel Baskinwig. I'm a former Lutheran pastor in the area and the founder of Daily Bread Yoga, which is still currently practicing via Zoom, and uh, you are all invited to join us as you are able. Um, I am recording this sermon on Thursday around 1 o'clock. So if something big happens before you see this on Sunday, that's why I did not mention it because um, I recorded it before it happened. Hopefully nothing gigantic will happen. If the vaccine is discovered, um, know that I give praise and thanksgiving in advance. This is a poem or a blessing for Ascension Day. 
by Jan Richardson. It's called Stay. I know how your mind rushes ahead, trying to fathom what could follow this. What will you do? Where will you go? How will you live? You will out want to outrun the grief. You will want to keep turning toward the horizon, watching for what was lost to come back, to return to you, and never leave again. For now, hear me when I say, all you need to do is to still yourself, is to turn toward one another, is to stay, wait and see what comes to fill the gaping hole in your chest. Wait with your hands open to receive what could never come except to what is empty and hollow. You cannot know it now, cannot even imagine what lies ahead. But I tell you, the day is coming when breath will fill your lungs as it never has before. And with your own ears, you will hear words coming to you new and startling. You will dream dreams and you will see the world ablaze with blessing. Wait for it. Still yourself. Stay. I read this blessing by Jane Richardson last year on Ascension Sunday at Grace Lutheran Church. I don't really remember what was happening in the world at that time. I made no mention of the current events in the sermon that day, so there couldn't have been anything too jarring. I thought it was really a beautiful blessing then. What I heard was the tremendous loss of Jesus to the disciples, the tremendous grief as individuals, and as this intimate small group, this community of people. The grief and sadness of losing this person who had changed their whole life, everything. Jesus had been more than a friend. He was the light that changed the way they saw and related to everything, including themselves. They lost their teacher, the one who made all the decisions, told them which way to go, what to do, and how to do it. It was surely unfathomable how life and their faith would go on without his guidance and actual presence. I read this story last year that I found in a book called Building God's People, an excerpt, or excuse me, a workbook for empowering servant leaders, or at least I found this excerpt from that book by Thomas Hawkins. And I think it speaks of Ascension Day, so beautifully and um well here it is i'm going to read it to you again when i was about 13 or 14 my father asked me to ride along with him as he cultivated a field of corn it was a tricky job the sharp blades of the cultivator had to pass between the rows of corn if we had veered a few inches to the left or to the right, we would have plowed out four rows of tender young corn plants. The John Deere Model 70 did not have power steering, so holding the tractor and cultivator in a straight path was not easy. After a few rounds down the 20 acre field, my father asked me if I would like to try driving. Reluctantly, I sat down behind the steering wheel, popped the clutch and took off down the field. Steering was harder than it looked. 40 feet of corn in a four row swath were plowed out before I had driven five minutes. My father gently gave me a few suggestions as I went awkwardly and destructively down the field and back. After a few more rounds, my father asked me to stop the tractor. I thought he had endured all the pain he could. The carnage in the cornfields was overwhelming. He would tell me to stop. I obviously was not controlling the tractor and the cultivator. Instead, my father dropped to the ground and said he had some chores to do in the barn. I was to finish the field and then come in for lunch. All morning long in my father's absence, I plied my way back and forth across the cornfield. Huge sections of corn were torn out, roots exposed to the drying sun and stalks prematurely sliced down. But by noon, I learned to handle the tractor and the cultivator. My father's absence was a sign to me that he trusted himself and what he taught me. It also signaled that he trusted me. 
His, his absence was empowering rather than disabling. It authorized me to trust myself, to trust what he had taught me. I would never have learned to cultivate corn had I worked anxiously under his critical eye, hanging on his every gesture and comment. That is the meaning of ascension and Pentecost. Jesus' withdrawal becomes an empowering absence. It is a sign that he trusts what he has taught us enough to set us free. He refuses to allow us to depend on him. We cannot cling to him, but must learn to discover his authority among ourselves. We honor Jesus' absence when we refuse to become little authorities trying to fill up Jesus' absence. We honor Jesus' absence when we help others experience the Holy Spirit through mutual collaboration rather than making them passive, dependent, or subservient to our authority. So that was the long excerpt. I just want to remind you, I did not experience, my father did not take me to take the corn out with a field or with a cultivator or to, anyways. The story of Jesus, of God trusting us to have the authority to make decisions, to follow our instincts, to know that we have been shaped and transformed by God's hand. This Ascension Sunday, I hear the Jan Richardson poem so differently than I did last year, when what I heard was grief and insecurity about making decisions about where to go, how to live without Jesus. What I hear and feel most this year is the, year, is the instruction to the disciples to stay and wait. Wait until you have been powered by the Holy Spirit. Then you will go out. Stay and wait. Wait until. The disciples are in that delicate and vulnerable time of transition. They are filled with so much grief of losing Jesus and so much fear of what has been and what has been lost. And they have completely reasonable fear and grief of the unknown to come. I wonder if they wanted more clarification about when they would be sent out. I wonder if they wanted to know what would, what, what would be the sign? Is it like a green light? How will we know when it's time? How will we know when we're ready? Will we feel ready? Will we feel filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to do all that you've asked us to? Stay and wait and get ready. This is what I hear this morning as we anticipate Illinois moving forward in the next phase, when things start opening up again, the end of this week. People can gather in small groups. You can get your hair cut. We have been told for months now to stay and wait until it is safe. Stay and wait until the cases go down. Stay and wait until there is a vaccine. Stay and wait until, and now we are being told that it might be time soon. Not anything like before. Not like whatever we thought normal was or would be, but it will be time to go out soon despite of and in the midst of our fears and our hopes. Like the disciples, we are in an incredibly vulnerable time of transition, of having to trust the power of the Holy Spirit within us, having to trust despite being filled with so much grief and fear of what has been lost and what has been the last few months. And we have completely reasonable and appropriate grief and fear of the unknown to come. Uncertainty about how will we know if we're ready? How will we know if we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to read the Jan Richardson blessing again. I encourage you to hear it and receive it as a prayer 
of recognition and an affirmation of wherever you are at, however you might be feeling in this time of trusting the sacred mystery of God, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Stay by Jan Richardson. I know how your mind rushes ahead, trying to fathom what could follow this. What will you do and where will you go? How will you live? You will want to outrun the grief. You will want to keep turning toward the horizon, watching for what was lost to come back, to return to you and never leave again. For now, hear me when I say, all you need to do is to still yourself is to turn toward one another, is to stay, wait, and see what comes to fill the gaping hole in your chest. Wait with your hands open to receive what could never come except to what is empty and hollow. You cannot know it now. You cannot even imagine what lies ahead. But I tell you, the day is coming when breath will fill your lungs as it never has before. And with your own ears, you will hear words coming to you new and startling. You will dream dreams and you will see the world ablaze with blessing. Wait for it, still yourself, stay, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. O God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. We lift up especially today Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler, whom the church commemorates this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable, especially those around the world who have contracted the coronavirus. Those suffering in nations where needed food or medical supplies are kept from those in need. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new adventures. We especially remember this day those who have graduated from various trade schools, colleges, universities, along with those who have lost jobs and are looking for new ones. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life, and until that day we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And now let us pray together the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is typically the time during our worship service when we would pass the offering plates around and offer our gifts to the Lord. So whatever your gifts are, your time, your talents, your treasures, um, find a meaningful way during this time to offer those up to the Lord. Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, life presents us with various significant milestones that set the stage for the next phase in our earthly journey. Graduation was one of these milestones and the 2020 graduates are having a senior year that they never expected. So today we wish to honor those who are moving through this special time of accomplishment, transition and change and to show them that we, their community of faith, stand with them and support them as fellow believers in Jesus Christ. God has called and gifted each one of these graduates for just such a time as this. Graduates, at this special time in your life, we're eager to show you how delighted we are that you have reached this milestone in your life. As fellow members of this community of faith, we rejoice with you and want you to know of our pride and excitement as you move from this accomplishment into the next phase of your journey. We also want you to know that wherever you go and whatever you do, we are going forward with you and you are going with our prayers for God's continued guidance, power, protection, and strength. So now we invite anyone who is present with the graduates to lay their hands on the graduates as we pray. Each petition will end with, for the blessings of our past and the promise of our future, Lord Jesus, thank you. So let us pray. God of all knowledge and keeper of all tomorrows. Thank you for all the graduates of the class of 2020. Thank you for the gifts you have given them and the skills they have developed so far in their lives. Thank you for their presence with us and for the gift of baptism. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of our past and the promise of our future. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the parents and the grandparents and other family members who have nurtured them. Thank you for the laughter and meals, the vacations and conversations, the stories and car rides, the arguments and apologies, and all the love that has held and shaped them. For the blessings of our past and the promise of our future, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for teachers and coaches, pastors and youth leaders, teammates and fellow students who have journeyed with them. May the lessons they have learned and the relationships that they have formed carry them forward. For the blessings of our past and the promise of our future, Lord Jesus, thank you. Now, families and friends, you may remove your hands from on top of the graduates. And it's at this time that we will entrust them to God's care for the next steps in their journeys. Will you continue to love and support and pray for these dearly loved ones? If so, answer, we will. Graduates, do you go forth knowing that God holds you and that you remain surrounded and supported by love of your family and friends? If you do, answer, we do. 
And now receive this blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.
May, May the, the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.